Hey there, this is Ryan Kingsling, founder of ZBrush Workshops. So I want to share with you this one part from our Sculpting MP5K workshop. And this is the part where uh, I go in and really dissect the anatomy of the holster. The key thing I want you to see in this is how what we're really doing is training you to think like an artist and training you to think like a craftsman all at the same time. And the idea is, is that you'll be able to conquer any level of complexity. Just break it down to the simplest parts possible, to some form, some level that you can actually replicate with ease. Think about this almost like you're a manager and you have on your team some good artists uh, and some okay artists. All the good artists are booked. So you've got some okay artists that you can assign a project to. And that, what that means is, is you just can't throw everything at them and just say, hey, get this done and uh, get back to me in, you know, by the end of the day. You can't do it. Instead, what you got to do is start to break it down a little bit. And you got to say, okay, I need you to tackle this, but I want you to make this in a very simple shape and these three shapes and then get it to me all nice and clean by the end of the day. If you talk in that sense where you break everything down into these very simple step-by-step -step formats that anybody can understand, it makes it easier for you. Everything is reproducible uh, and you don't have any of those magic moments where you just don't remember how you got there. And that's the key for us as uh, working artists, working sculptors, being able to reproduce it, being able to have consistent results all the time. So all of that rambling check out this workshop check out this clip from it and uh, you know see what you think let me know in the comments down below check the description of the of this video for the workshop page there's some bonuses in there for you there's a complete workshop on uh, understanding brushes that's in there and a little bit more information about the workshop so sign up for the email list and uh, good luck with your sculpting all right now it's time to get in and create the uh, the drop holster for this guy and uh, to do that we're going to scour the web looking for drop holsters for submachine guns not necessarily the most common way uh, for this to be held usually it's under the shoulder and on a sling um, and then kind of strapped to the body uh, but in the upper body uh, I like the idea of a thigh uh, holster here, a drop holster for it. So we found something. Let me turn spotlight on. Extreme Ops Tactical Leg Holster for Fully Equipped Pistols and MP Submachine Guns, which is one of the things that we've got here. So I was able to find a lot of uh, images of this holster, not a lot, but enough. And um, we're going to break it down and start to analyze kind of what this really is and it does take some analysis and the more analysis you do the better you're going to uh, enjoy the experience the the easier it's going to be because we want to understand you know exactly what is going on here um, let's say set our draw size down a little we want to know what's the makeup of this thing how is it all relating connecting what kind of box situation are we looking at? Let's go hardcore there. How are these constructed? How do they overlap each other? All of that is what we really need to be looking at and doing our best to understand. So let me sketch out what I think the shape of this is. And uh, you'll have the reference with you so you can sketch it out uh, as you see fit. But I'm going to uh, switch over to Quick Sketch to give you a bit of a preview of this. I love Quick Sketch, um, but I don't use it with this symmetry that's automatically established. Uh, so I turn symmetry off, and I am a big fan of the Pen A brush. This is a, a really nice sketch brush. Lower that draw size. My colors are already set up for me. And then um, I've got a sketch off to the side here that I'll just show you um, what we're kind of thinking. This has to have a, a primary platform that's attaching to the leg. So let's just pull that out. Okay, The thigh is on the other side of this pad, this hardened pad of clothing. 
Uh, and then we have the area where the gun is going to fit in. And then we've got some overlap from that area. OK, this area in here, not so important. We can just switch our colors, start to paint this out. Switch our colors back. OK, now from the uh, left side, we've got uh, the drop. In order to kind of fit the the uh, grip up here, so the grip will fit down here, and then you've got the trigger and the gun and all of that stuff. Um, so we need to have that drop in place, which we do. And then this is going to pull forward a little bit. Okay, so these guys are going to kind of fold in. This piece folds underneath. This piece is going to fold on top. That's just the nature of the, their interaction, or at least that's what I'm assuming. Now also, from the reference, I've been able to divine that there's a little strap hanging out the bottom. So let me just put that back lightly. So we have a strap here which is going to come around and attach towards the front. So let's just put the angles in for that. Okay, And we've also got a really thick strap attaching to the back that's actually connected in with a buckle that's then connected into some other stuff connecting up to the connecting up into the the belt we've also got another strap mirroring the one on the bottom that is bridging these the gap between these guys and its job is to come down and attach. We've got some buckles in here where the straps are going to fit. They're going to just be pulled tight. We're going to look at those in, in a little bit. But then right out of the back, we've got a series of straps that are wrapping around the thigh. So these guys here are disappearing off, wrapping around to the other side, to the thigh. And they have a nice little buckle. All right. And there we go. We've got a bit of a sense of the exact structure that we're going to be looking for at this point. And uh, so the first item that I really want to make sure I have a clear sense of is this main form the pattern. So I'm going to outline this. I'm going to try to get a 2D pattern that fits this particular form. And that's going to probably be something as simple as what I'll draw down here. Of course we'll make it larger, but we'll make another little section depending on how thick that's going to be and then a thicker section. All right, and we're going to drop that down. Smaller section, smaller section. Okay, so point one is going to correspond right there, whereas point three is right here with A and B in between. Let's just say 0.5 right there. So with that in mind, 
I can quite easily just use a mask to extract a template. And all I have to do is just remember these proportions. I just got to keep these things in mind. So maybe this section is going to be the same as that. So we're going to say that's A and A. Um, and they might be the same width here, whereas this is going to be, say, 0.25 or 0.5A. It's these proportions you want to keep in mind, but you don't have to be that specific because once you get this bent, you can do a lot of maneuvering. There's no real problem. You can take the form and just stretch that out to be longer. Nobody's going to know the difference. It's not a, not a big deal killer. Uh, we do want to be mindful of this downward slope, but again, definitely easily fixable. So this mechanical breakdown is something that I've done before I started to sculpt, and that makes a huge difference in my workflow and my, my process. So instead of uh, slamming my head against the wall, trying to figure out all of the shapes, I now have the core shapes, I have the core pattern, and uh, it's going to be fairly straightforward from here.